Hey, I'm Anthony Romano, and this video is going to answer the question, do you need to carb load? And I'm also going to tell you the benefits of carb loading versus carb backloading and using carbs in strategic manners like targeted keto and things of that nature. So targeted keto, meaning ketogenic state, then sprinkling in carbs as necessary for workouts. Not saying it's necessary, but as desired. So let's get into this because there are some problems with carb loading and a lot of the mainstream fitness advice basically says, oh, you have some activity planned for tomorrow? Eat a shitload of carbs tonight. But you have to realize carbs are a strategic tool for you, okay? Even as a guy who's been doing keto for like a decade right now and using carbs strategically here and there, I will tell you that you don't necessarily need carbs to perform your best provided you are keto adapted, right? If you're somebody who likes fasting, you already have a sliver of the taste of the benefits of keto adaption, but you're not in the deep end of the pool. But the point is, slamming carbs all the time is not something our ancestors would have done. It's not something that's going to benefit you athletically, even though, you know, lots of athletes can benefit from having a appropriate amounts of carbohydrate fuel the point is it can cause more problems perhaps than benefits and ultimately if you are somebody who's using lots of carbs and you still want to have lots of carbs for athletic purposes you're far better off even just having the same amount of carbs but timing them differently so a carb backloading plan or something of that nature so we're gonna get into it in this video but first i encourage you to like it subscribe and also check out the keto shred program just dropped launch sale is still on and I've extended it for the new year. You know, this is the lowest price it'll ever be at. Check my website, RomanoKeto.com. Let's get into this video. So, what's the deal with carb loading and what are the problems? Well, carb loading is a strategy that we've all probably used at some point in our life if you've done any sort of athletic sports or anything like that. I remember growing up, it was like, oh yeah, you got a, a sports game? Okay, eat a shitload of pasta the night before and then the day of the game and then, you know, before the game, right? Like, that's kind of the strategy that we're told, right? Because the theory is just, oh, you need carbs to exercise? Eat loads of carbs. But it ignores the fact that timing of carbohydrates makes a big difference. Now, how does timing make a big difference? Well, <clears throat> if, if you think about carbohydrate usage, if you just slam your body with carbs all the time, what's going to happen is your body is going to lose insulin sensitivity. Now, if you think about our ancestral environment, carbohydrates do not grow for half of the year in most parts of the world. And even if they did grow in some in winter time, right, in Mexico, prehistoric Mexico, then they wouldn't be available for very long periods of time and not in abundant amounts. They don't last longer than two weeks unless you chalk them full of preservatives and ship them over from Guadalajara. So basically, your ancestors wouldn't be able to find fruits and grains, you know, in the wintertime. They don't exist. I can't go outside in Canada right now and get you know, uh, some fruits and grains. I have to ship them over from another country that does have them in season. And then when they're in their winter, they're going to be lower in their, you know, availability. So why is this necessary? Why was this happening? Well, our metabolism is seasonal. This is my own sort of conjecture on this, my own theory. So I will say that it's, you can debate it if you like, but you know, it lines up with our evolutionary history. And the point is this was our seasonal metabolism. This is our body's way of sensitizing us to using carbohydrates efficiently for the other half of the year when they are available. So Nowadays, and by the way, the carbohydrate sources back then were far more fiber rich. The minerals were far in high, far, far higher quantities in those foods back then. So when it comes to today's usage, everybody's slamming these carbs all the time. And I'm not telling you you have to cut out carbs entirely for the half of the year, but I'm saying if you tap into ketosis, of course, you'll experience enhanced benefit at some parts of the year. Now, how do I make this practical for somebody who wants to keep eating carbohydrates all the time? That's fine. But if you simply even just cut out carbohydrates for the morning and then slam them post-workout, you are going to be basically doing carb backloading, which is a great strategy from John Kiefer, giving him full credit for that. But my own twist onto that is you want to get keto fat adapted first, which means keto straight for a month beforehand, because then your body's going to have better accessibility to the use to fat as the primary fuel. Now, you don't even have to go that far, right? But even if you time your if you don't carb load and just time your carbs depending on their digestive speed in relation to your activity then you will receive some benefits. So example, if you're somebody who has a marathon to run, you would benefit from a slower digesting carb consumed before. So a honey, a maltulose, a slower digesting, you know, steady burn carbohydrate fuel, right? Complex carbohydrates that they always say, right? Those things, of course, will help. But 
Is it going to enhance your body's ability to use the glucose in and of itself? No, but if you're an athlete, you probably have very good levels of glucose efficiency and, and disposal. Now, I've worked with people, top level athletes, who have burnt out their glucose system because they basically had to you know, perform at high levels and just churn through 6,000, 7,000 calories a day with most of their energy source coming from carbohydrates. So literally, I've seen this mess people up in a lot of ways. Uh, it's affected their body's ability to use glucose in the brain. It's affected their body's ability to use glucose and, and, in, in muscles, right? And basically a lot of other problems. But basically the point is, if you're you know an athlete and you're always keeping your body reliant on carbohydrates, it's going to be locked into a carbohydrate metabolism and you're not going to have any sort of metabolic flexibility. So one takeaway from this video is you want to in integrate strategies of keto, fasting, intermittent fasting, carb backloading, targeted keto. You want to start integrating those in some way in your training sessions, not even solely the games, just to get some sort of enhanced ability to use fat as a fuel in tandem with carbohydrates. So you get, if you think about it, why do we have two main fuel sources? They're obviously meant to be used for different purposes or slightly different purposes. Think of fats as the gasoline in the car and carbs are like the nitro fuel, the nitrous oxide, okay? You can still get a nasty speeding ticket with fat as fuel and nobody gives fat credit for that because it's a slower burning fuel, but it's a more energy packed fuel. It has nine calories a gram, carbs have four. So carbs are the quick burst nitro fuel, which you can use in fight or flight scenarios. And fat is the slow burn, steady, reliable, you know, mainstay that your body wants to use for a lot of other activities that don't require, you know, that one rep max, okay? You can, there's still some studies that keto adapted people can get some of their one rep max fueled by fat and creatine phosphate. But the point is, creatine phosphate system, but basically the point is, in general, that is the primary purpose of carbohydrate is the nitro quick pulse, okay? If you're burning out your entire engine on nitro fuel, your engine's gonna burst, okay? You, everybody's seen a Fast and Furious movie. That's what happens if, in this analogy here. So in people I've worked with who are always running on carbohydrate fuel, you're going to burn out your glucose system. Even if you're still carb loading and always making sure you have enough carbs. Sure, you're going to perform good because you have enough fuel, right? From carbohydrate, if that's your selected fuel. But the point is you could run into other problems. So the next takeaway, the last takeaway here is how to maximize carbohydrate timing if you're somebody who doesn't want to integrate some of those strategies. Well, besides the fact that you should at least start training or doing some sort of practice sessions with an intermittent fast in place, some fasted training, some, you know, other techniques like that to enhance the glucose efficiency, insulin sensitivity, okay? The main takeaway here as well is simply slamming more carbs is not going to lead to the, you know, desired effect in athletics. You also want to pay attention to the type of carbohydrate. So something with fructose in it, sucrose, right? Something like that, fructose or sucrose, is going to have some fructose delivered to your liver, which means this is your backup team of carbohydrates, and it's going to slowly get delivered into your bloodstream during activities. So granted, that's it makes it a less optimal fuel source for carbohydrate-based athletes, predominantly carbohydrate-based, it makes it less optimal for things like if you're a power lifter, you know, you'll still want some liver glycogen in you, but if you're a power lifter, you're going to want some, some glycogen building fuel, okay? So some quick digesting carbs that you would basically slam after a workout, replenish those glycogen stores. Or if you did some sort of targeted keto routine, which is basically carbohydrates consumed pre-workout, right? About an hour or less pre-workout of a very fast digesting type. That's basically going to raise your blood sugar a little bit and provide a little bit more muscle glycogen. So that is again, where the abstaining of carbohydrate consumption enhances your body's necessity to use it efficiently. Because again, we are survival machines. If you want to understand the rationale behind this, your body in the absence of sugar is going to realize that whenever it does get sugar, it has to use it efficiently. And that is again, where a lot of these benefits stem from. But the point is, if you're an athlete who still wants to stick to a lot of high carbohydrate consumption, start getting selective over your types of carbohydrate. So if you're a marathon runner, get some fructose, get some maltulose, get some honey, right? Some raw honey, good quality honey, manuka honey, okay? From New Zealand, get that shit. And that will slowly burn and it won't create a blood sugar crash. Because the other thing you have to realize is that these blood sugar crashes from a spike and fall is what causes you to burn out. And there is a reason for this in the brain. The reason why is that when your brain perceives that your blood sugar is tanked, it's basically, it shuts everything off because it's basically saying, holy shit, you're out of carbohydrates and you don't have an enhanced ability to use fat. So we got to just make you tap out and make you physically fatigued. Because if you're being chased by a bear at that point, you want to go hide. 
okay? Your body's telling you you're not going to outrun this bear with the amount of blood sugar you got right now. So go crash and hide somewhere. That's your best bet. That's how you play your cards best at this point. So that's the sort of evolutionary narrative here. But the point is your brain will shut off other processes. It will basically start making you feel very taxed because it's just the perception of low blood sugar. You might actually still have a good amount of sugar on hand in your muscles and your liver. But the point is your body is preemptively trying to get you to tap out as a survival mechanism. So in athletics, if you have poor blood sugar control, because you're not using any of these sort of fasted exercise or other protocols, then, you know, you're going to have problem there. But the point is you don't want to become reliant on carbohydrate. And if you are still choosing to be fully reliant on carbohydrate, I'm not going to judge you, but you would be better off using some other strategies. But the point is get some of the right type. Get some that's not going to create a blood sugar spike and crash, and then basically make your body tap out just because of the perception of scarcity. So that is it for this video. Like it, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, and leave me some comments down below. I'll do my best to get back to you, and share this video too if you know it's going to help somebody. So that's it for this one. Anthony Romano, peace.